beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed There are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints. There is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ. But there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in Christ. Let's look at it very quickly. Number one, the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was paul who was speaking um, um which of the church now help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you Let's look at a few scriptures very quickly. Second Peter chapter 2. We'll read verse 2, verse 12, and verse 13. If we can run through it very quickly. Second Peter chapter 2. We'll, look, we'll read verse 2, verse 12, and 13. Media, please help us. Second Peter chapter 2. And then we'll look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, deceptive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The Bible is talking of a kind of deception here. Are we together now? I don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is. But just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here. Go to verse 12, please. 12 and then 13. It says, but this. Paul is really, I mean, Apostle Peter here is really angry. And he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive. He said, but this. As natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. He says, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That means that believers have been made to be deceived by 
the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand. There are many people who would have been delivered, but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself, he's not being deceived, took them away from the life that would have blessed them. The Bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand. There is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them. Just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church. And there are many of us men of God who are victims of this. There are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in. Except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship. And we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds. That derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty. They followed us away from their breakthrough. Let's look at the second. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Again media please help us very quickly. We are still looking at deception. Three verses here I found just to explain the different kinds of deception. This is talking about the great dragon. Revelation 12. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived how many? The whole world. So Satan, part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception. He deceived the whole world. The Bible says he was cast into where? He was cast into where? Uh oh, earth, there's a problem. The deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven. Unfortunately, he landed here. What do you think will happen here on earth? Deception. So he comes to Eve and manipulates Eve, comes to Adam and says, Adam, come. Let me tell you something. Did God really say that A, B, C, D? And Adam said, well, he said we may freely eat of the food. Eve said this and that and that. And then he said, no, there is something God is hiding from you. God is hiding this. I hope you know that Satan never, um, Satan never wanted, I used to think Satan wanted to replace God. No, no. Satan didn't want to replace God. He wanted to run a parallel government. I will be like, not I will be the most high. The, God, continue your throne. Sit there. I will also. I want to sit by your right hand. Now you understand what happened to man. Satan wanted to sit. Let's let's go. Since since the word Eloha, Elohim, it is plural. Add me to the Godhead. That's what he wanted. I am. I have done too much. I hope you know. I, I like. Oh dear. I don't want to go into the pre Adamite dispensation, but I hope you know. When you begin to read Jeremiah chapter 4, I, I don't want to go there, don't, don't, don't go there media, um, for time's sake. You, you realize that Satan was sent as a representative of the love of God to the then civilization and the then creation. What Jesus represents to our civilization was what Lucifer, the light bearer, the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom, he was sent. He didn't just deceive a third of the angels. Are you seeing how powerful his deception is? A third of the angels that are in heaven where God is, they fell for him. Talk more of you. And then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes. And the kings and the nations lamented. They say, you have become like one of us. Jeremiah chapter 4 when you read. You who brought the nations. The Bible says he weakened the nation. That was his sin. It was not just pride. There was something he made that made the nations weak. And now he has become like one of us. And he raised up a lamentation. Then you begin to compare with other scriptures. That's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan. The first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. Thou was in Eden. The garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there, Satan said, Okay, God, finish and go. And let me come to the garden I'm used to. He knew where to, found, to find Eve. 
He never said, Eve, where are you? It's God that said, Adam, where are you? Satan always knows where to find them. I know where frail human beings can be found. Let me tell you, every man, even from Adam, was born with the tendency to sin. In iniquity, Jeremiah said, did my mother. He never said in sin. Remember, it's iniquity that produces sin. Iniquity is a state of the heart. The propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing. That's why he said, um, subdue, replenish. He used the word subdue. In other words, be careful. There is a stranger. I don't want to tell you his story. But don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden. And then Satan came. You think he came to Eve one day? No. He had been coming. Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, only stop me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remain small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted him on three things that, re that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from. Jesus, you are hungry. Remember, part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need. So Satan, I mean Jesus, don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger. The power of God is able to turn stones into bread. Do it. And Jesus said no. And Satan found out, okay, I see you are so obsessed with your assignment. You have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom. Next temptation. Let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of God. Why route it the hard way? All the kings that are in these systems, I deceive them and place them there. They are my boys. Bow to me. And let me just give you their heart. Instead of routing through the cross and all this thing. Are you seeing Satan now? He left Jesus for a season. He said, I'm coming. Notice he never came directly to Jesus again. Satan for you. The next time we see Satan coming, he's coming to Peter. Remember, the goal is to Jesus. Then the next time we see him again, Judas. Then the next time in Jesus' weakness, he now comes and manipulates his mind. And Jesus for the first time says, Father, is it possible that you take this cup off me? And Jesus said, no. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Not my will. If Jesus prayed that prayer, the Father would have granted him. Yes. Because he always hears me. Jesus said it at the grave of Lazarus. I thank thee, Father, because you always hear me. I, ha I had to pray this in open so that they will know. I'm not my, my open prayer is not an act of unbelief. I'm saying it to minister to them. I thank thee because you always hear me. If Jesus stopped at that prayer, the Father would have said, Well, I cannot be a demon to usurp your will. You have chosen to abort redemption. So let it be. And that would be it. He still will be the word. But there is no longer fruits of redemption. He will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten. But thank God he endured. And he has now become not just the only begotten. But the first begotten of the father. We being the proceeds of that salvation. And the Bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue. Are we together? Deception. The third way deception can happen. Ephesians 5 verse 6. God, we have to run. We have to run. At least let's, let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray. Let no man deceive you with what? Help me. So the third instrument of deception is vain words. You can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate. I can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries. And in the end of it, you are bamboozed 
by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of God on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the word. Are we together now? That the word of God is able to establish you. The Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. And then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word of God is able to give us wisdom. Wisdom. Number two. The second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control the first realm the realm of deception thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive, that keep men subject to the laws of Satan. Like we shared in Luke 22. Give us Luke 22 and verse 31. This was the encounter that Jesus had with Peter. Remember Luke 22. The Lord said to Simon, watch this. Simon, remember, was a disciple of Jesus. Although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know, but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of God alone should create some system of immunity. Yet Satan penetrated all of that and came again through Simon, the chiefest of the apostles. Are we together? He was forbidding Jesus that Jesus should not talk about death. No, Jesus, don't talk about the cross and anything. And Jesus was said, oh Simon, you love me so much. You are such a kind man. Jesus looked at him and said, no, this is not kindness. This is, this is the devil wants to use. He's taking advantage. Now watch this. Are you seeing how manipulation and control happens? It takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly. And Satan can buy into it to become what you... If you have compassion, Satan can use compassion to deceive you. If you have intelligence, Satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you. Here he takes advantage of Peter's compassion. Peter thought he was being sympathetic to Jesus. Jesus, you've done too much. Don't talk about death. Ah, I'm going to miss you. What does a good leader do? Oh, I, I, you guys are all wicked people. I'm talking of dying and none of you is crying. Peter, come. I love you. In fact, when, I, when, when as I'm going to heaven, you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate. Hear what Jesus says. Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says, Get thee behind me. This is Jesus. Why didn't he look at the ground? Get, no, no, no. He looks at Peter. Get thee behind me. Simon, Simon. He said, Satan had desired to do what? Have you. That he may sift you as we next verse but I have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted. He said use this same formula. To strengthen your brethren. That means intercede for them too. Because Satan will come. Are you seeing why intercession is important. In a church for the saints. Paul was praying that. We, we pray. That, that um, um, prayers and supplications. Be offered for those in government. For this and that. That we may live a peaceable and a quiet life. 
if you don't pray, Satan will sway people. Manipulation, the realm of the mind. Now, this is where it looks as though believers are possessed. Are we together? Because you see, when you are... I, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now. That, that's for series 3. Are we together? But you notice, even here in Koinonia, and even you know, right now as I've been talking, you are seeing believers that you know love God. But in the pro they themselves are shocked. All of a sudden, they start crying and talking things and saying things, and you look at them. And you say, ah, but this person is a believer. Why is this person suddenly crying out and a spirit is leaving the person? The physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same. It takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there. So be careful so you don't blackmail believers. And all of a sudden you see a Mecca now standing. And I touch his head and he's manifesting. I say, you see this guy? These, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in Koinonia. No, no. That kind of talk is, is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes. Don't blackmail believers just because of this. And again, we prophets and apostles, I think we must be one in Jesus' name. Because we are the ones who advocate this confusion. Just because you look and see a snake, you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry. He knows he's not a snake. He knows he's not a fool. He loves God with all his heart. He is surprised that he was manifesting. And he's ashamed. And he, he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall. So that means they are sound. Not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head. Are we together? God bless you. So the realm of the mind, manipulation and control. This is where Satan sways our thoughts. It is manipulation and control is so powerful. It will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers, not unbelievers. Unbelievers are so flexible. The sincerity of their heart doesn't even, it allows them to find truth. It is believers that are quick to look at men of God. Apostle Joshua Selman, how can a young man like that have crowd? Be careful, Lord, we are in the end times. And you will think you are being sincere. Are we together now? Manipulation. It is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much. He now uses his face to you in a dream. Watch this. Somebody that loves you and is praying for you, maybe your mother, now appears and you go and say, Apostle, prophet, I saw my mother with a knife and he said, I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch. And all of a sudden you carry out and straight to your village. And your mother said, Oh my God, I don't tell me anything. So you are the one behind my pain. Manipulation. Both the counselor and the counseling, both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control. Are we together now? Very important. Satan can manipulate you. The moment he sees, that you are getting, you are praying over a challenge in your life, and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the Lord. He withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying. You will take, you will take the withdrawal to be victory established. Then you will now say because he knows that you will never see God until there is trouble. So the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the Lord, you will see a temporary victory and say, Ah, that's it. The dream has stopped. And so you continue in that low level and think you are safe. Whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter. Is God giving us intelligence tonight? Manipulation. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I look at my own life. Let me be honest with you. I look at my own life. I look at my background. And brothers and sisters, I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was. And how Satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines, with theories, with all kinds of things. It's amazing. Sometimes I sit down and I listen to men of God. Sometimes I attend conferences and I see people. And I see very well-meaning believers. But I am afraid. Sometimes even very anointed. I am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations. The very context of their doctrine 
will tell you that they are under manipulation. There are all kinds of manipulations. If I get up today, for instance, as a man of God, and I believe that every other church and every other ministry in Zaria is wasting God's time except me, that state is already a sign of progress in an attack. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria, and that every other person, especially our fathers, our reverends here and there, they are just talkatives wasting God's time. The fact that I could accept that imagination, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? That I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack. Dishonor to constituted authority. We are all men of God. There's nothing you have that I don't have. It's a sign of this level of attack. Listen very carefully. The pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this. You will not know. Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. It's a man, how long do you fast? He says, well, I managed to do two. Like <laughs> this guy. Still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that, it's a show of spirituality. It could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you. But it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind. Then on the other hand, you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say, look, all you guys need. You see, you see wisdom is profitable to direct. This prayer, prayer is this all nonsense. You are just praying stupid. That stage too is another version of manipulation. Are you getting the point now? Yes. The fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of God working for you is big deception. I'm repeating this thing again. I believe in prosperity. We've taught a lot on success systems. But learn this. I think the church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life. In terms of financial abundance. No. Remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery Babylon can enrich the kings of the earth. She's a matcher. She can make men rich. So just because I'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread, you can mistake the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because I have tea and bread, my life is alright. It's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege. And I myself can be deceived. Because the moment I want to think about my life and at last cost one million lava. That means this thing is in place. If it was not in place, I mean, where did the devil stop it from the bank? Let's be very careful. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has. I'm not against abundance now. I hate poverty. We all do as a ministry. Are we together? But at the same time, we must be careful. There are many people whose lives are not alright. Just because they have a lot of money, they just turn and look at other poor. It's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed. Even if he's free, he will not agree. Because the whiplash of the, uh, what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right, even when he has been delivered, there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful. When someone does not eat, it's easy. That's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses. It's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage. Are we together? Manipulation and control. Number three. Find somewhere to stop here tonight. Is complete possession. That means complete possession. 
of your spirit, your soul, your body. The entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness. This is called possession. The Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing. Mark chapter 5. The madman in Gadara. Do you know why he was a madman? In fact, he was not even a madman. We only call him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so, his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be alright based on men's context of civilization? Imagine the war. This one is saying, cut this stone. And so he just remained. And notice how restful he was. The Bible says he would sit down in a cave quietly. They came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. It's a long reading. We'll find somewhere to stop. Verse 2. Let's continue. And when he was come out of the ship, listen carefully, immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what? You see that it was not a madman. It was just a man with too many unclean spirits. A man with an unclean spirit. Verse 3. Who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. A man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him. Because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Verse 5. Okay. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now, you would think that worship is homage. No. This is Satan at work. Deception. Deception. Let me tell you this. When Satan knows you will overpower him, his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you. Remember in the book of Acts. These are the holy men of God. They have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom. So that the day Paul goes, will say, since we can't see Paul, we know that you are allies in ministry. And the deception will continue. Be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you. It's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there. So that you will be struck eventually. But when he saw Jesus, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 6. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God. Satan. Speaking through a man. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Eight. Oh dear. I'm sorry, Mark is not giving us the context I'm looking for. Anyway, we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there. One of the synoptics that talks about the legions, I thought that was where it would lead us. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Mark gave us an epistle of one spirit, but we know, I think, um... Ah, okay. Mark leaves it there too. And he asked him, What is thy name? Identify yourself. Now, there has been a debate about this. I don't, I'll talk about it next week. Talking to demons, talking back to you. We'll address it. Don't worry. Trust me. My name is Joshua Selman. Justice will be done adequately. Are we together now? And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is... Is that a name? My name is what? Legion. Suddenly, he now changes from I to we. We are many. Don't be deceived that only one person is speaking. We are many. Multiple spirits can exist within the same entity. Strange. So your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you. Another spirit. Many spirits. Legions. We are many. Verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country. This is another discussion. How can demons beg and say, Okay, apostle, cast us out of here, but let's not go outside of new extension. We have been in new extension for a long time. 
Look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have. They know that there is jurisdiction of their influence. And say, if you take us out of that jurisdiction, there is no basis for dominion. So leave us within our prescribed territory. We will leave the individual you are interested in, but leave the territory. This is a message that many of us need to learn. So it can leave you, but it's still around you. Waiting for a moment when you will grant access again. Jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man, so demons can leave men. Let it not surprise you that demons leave men. The Bible says it goes through arid regions. And not finding any place of habitation, it will tell itself, I will return back to my house. You are born again, he's still calling you his house. You see how tenacious Satan is? My house. And he comes and finds it swept, clean, but empty. Then it doesn't enter alone. It gathers seven greater than itself. Look at that system of coordination. Seven greater than itself. And returns and they comfortably stay in you. So that the end of that man is even worse. Don't miss the next part three of this. I will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete. And I will be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance. Why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever? You know, because this is, I'm already going ahead of myself. I want to solve that problem. There are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing, continuous and forever process. In a way they are right and in a way they are wrong. When I teach you the dimensions of deliverance, we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong. The deliverance of transformation, because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation. It is an ongoing process. Christ being the standard on, and the reference. So in that way, it is correct. But deliverance like a continual exorcism, casting away of spirit beings, the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away. Are you getting me now? All of that we are going to deal with next week. We have to find a place to tie it today. Levels of satanic influence. Number one, deception. We are just doing a recap. Number two, manipulation and control. Number three, complete possession. Look up please. Of all these three levels, the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to Christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept, you have to understand an old Jewish practice called salt covenant. The salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries. And they would use salt. Are we together? You would bring your salt, I will bring my salt. And we will pour it together in a vessel and mix it. The condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out. Are we together? So our redemption is in the similitude of that kind. Complete possession. By the authority of scripture, I do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit, soul, and body. Although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation. Are you getting where the error comes from now? So, like I said, if I pray, we're going to start praying shortly. And many of you, even as you are listening to me now, will find out that you start manifesting. And sometimes in the manifestation, you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed. Are we together? And if you do not discern with understanding, you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed. I've seen many people join the line after Koinonia. And then they ask me, Apostle, am I a witch? I say, what is the meaning of that? I say, please. I'm tired of everybody around saying I'm a witch. Even a witch, listen carefully, even a witch is not entirely possessed. Hmm. You 
see that. That thing we call witch and wizards. No. There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. The salvation is not for them. They cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus. Otherwise, probably the angels would have re repented. Salvation is not for angels. Salvation is not for any other beings. In fact, in fact, listen very carefully. The scope of salvation starts as, as far as the authority of Scripture reveals to us. Starts from the Adam, the man who originated our human civilization. If you were before Adam, there was another system. Are we together? It was not redemption through the blood of the eternal Son of God. Because when, according to Apostle Peter, when Jesus went to hell, the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-Adamites. We know that by those who resurrected with him. Are we together now? The Bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of Jerusalem. Then having ascended to the Father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there, the atonement, he now came and they all went together. Are we together now? So we know that it is true that, that uh, Apostle Peter lets us know that Jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers. But if you were not of Adam, that's why Jesus is called the second Adam. So it starts from there. There are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation, but they are on earth. Satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So you can find some of these entities. The fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials, material bodies. And then you will also see them manifest in material bodies. I'm not talking of entering a human being. They themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material, but it's not a human being. Those are the kinds that we, that's the classic proof of wizardry. Are we together now? It's not just an individual who has been possessed. There is a dimension of that. But there are beings on earth that you see, they are humanoid in their context, but they are not human beings. They are not progenitors from, from Adam. Salvation, they can't receive salvation. It is this kind that the Bible says, spare not a witch to live. You will be blessed with a lot of balance. Um, if there's something, I, I want to reserve it here for three. Because as I just said that, many of you now are afraid. Okay, so if they don't leave, you are trying to say they die. So what does that mean? Because many of you have seen ministries, uh, respectfully great ministries like Mountain of Fire and all of that. Sometimes you see them say die. And then you are now saying, so what is it? And men of God have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die. We will find out how spirits die. Because spirits die. <laughs> The greatest strength of Satan, the one factor that makes Satan look powerful over lives, is one word, the flesh. Write it down. The flesh. Next, or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it, we'll start from there. The flesh. I have to stop now. No matter what level of deliverance you go through, Every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk. Meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh. Are we together? Now, this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in, in futility comes from. And attempts to continue to cast out spirits, cast out spirits, cast out spirits. 
and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say hey. to mean you are powerful and he's waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that God has brought to you. Are we blessed? Rise up on your feet. Rise up, please. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. Hallelujah. I know that 
I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel the man had died. But Abel the blood was speaking. And he cried. And God himself had to say no something is happening. Although the man had died. But the blood is still speaking. I'd like you to engage the blood. And say in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood. I invoke the advocacy of the blood. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak. Over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. When I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncement in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. We declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek higher than the Aaronic priesthood higher than the priesthood of Noah we declare in the name of Jesus the blood speaks the blood speaks over the ordinance of our father the blood speaks hallelujah Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. The Bible says, listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. Something is happening here. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue. Remember, I will be sharing with you. Every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun. The sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity, demonically on earth, without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity. Until light returned, then Satan now returned with his activity too. When there was, all through the period of darkness, the only entity we see is the Spirit of God. We never hear of any demon jumping. The moment the sun was withdrawn and the moon was withdrawn, so the psalmist said, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. We can thrive only with the sun. That's why Jesus himself is called the Son of Righteousness that can arise with healing. Thou shall not be he said the sun shall not smite you that means for as long as there is sun and there is moon i can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you that will tap the power of the sun to spare you away 
Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember, all of them are light. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this, Jacob said, So, me. Jacob called himself the sun. So, I will bow. And my wife, who gets her glory from me, like the moon from the sun, and then your brothers, who are also stars, will bow to you. Jacob was worried. The sun bowing. The sun can bow. The moon can bow. Even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow. What is this power that can make the sun bow? By next week I will share with you how God delivered me. You know I have been telling you what I went through but I have not shared with you how I came out. This is what I want to share with you. Guys. Look let me tell you. You don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit. You will smash the gates of darkness. He said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. That you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say, I dare you. I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him. I'm happy his name is called Joshua. Hi! <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Every time God wanted to bring redemption to men, he didn't just bless them. He did something to the sun and the moon. He realigned them to their advantage. Hezekiah was about to die. And when God turned his life, he said, at a time, I will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you, that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it to kill you, will no longer be able to touch you. Joshua looked at the sun and said, Jericho, it's not an ordinary city. They are fortified because they have done something even with the sun and the moon. And he said, Son, there is war about to be fought. And because of that, stand still. It's not just because of light. Sun, stand still. Moon, hold your peace. And all of a sudden, Jericho suddenly became afraid. The diviners in Jericho said, this thing is not working again. They said, what happened? They said, someone has done something to the sun. Jericho was close and they were afraid. The, the nation of Israel were not fighting. They are, the, the Bible said they were close. None went out, none entered. They said, we're in trouble. The sun and the moon. You will see why Habalists do all kinds of things. And drop a mirror on the ground. And use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantment and we laugh and say, Oh, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden, you will now see why the sun is categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night. There are arrows that fly only by day. The what empowers them is the sun. There is the destruction that wasted in noonday. Once it is twelve on the dot, that destruction can start. Please be interested in what I'm sharing. Because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of this ministry. There is what can subdue causes. Yes, it is the blood of Jesus. Yes, it is all of this. But the dynamics of that operation, brothers and sisters, the powers that hold Africa are powerful. Don't trivialize it. Jesus is above all. I don't in any way demean the power of God. If I did, I would not be standing here. If I did, this koinonia would not be standing here. If I'm faking what I tell you, I will not open my mouth to declare this. Because that means I won't be able to sleep this night too. Oh, 
can stand against the law. No one can. No one will. I know some of you have not been doing it. Don't do it as a ritual. But I want you to receive grace. To do it with understanding. Forget about what happens. Just do what I ask you to do. It doesn't matter whether, even if you are praying and a demon appears, don't worry. You are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God. Conquer the realm of the flesh. Are we together? We are going to receive grace to pray. But I want to pray for you right now. Please just help anyone under the anointing. Just two minutes and then we are done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I, my God, I'm seeing His call. Right now I declare every hold of darkness, even in this spirit, help them. Jesus, look at what is happening there. In the name of Jesus, you know my voice. I was once your victim. But tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of David by the message of God. I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone here under the sound of my voice, who is under any kind of siege, right now be free in the name of Jesus. 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 Every family under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie. Shabakatokasata. Embreketokashabalakata. Reketokatos. Shabakatasata. Rakatos shabariatakata. In the name of Jesus. Fire, I'm seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing from heaven. Shabokotos Kamariatata. Man Takoto Shekete. Ebrekete Loko Sobarita. Maprakatos Karia. I'm praying for you in the spirit. Sheketo Koto Shamana. Eketalia Katavariakata. In the name of Jesus. I cause the plague of witchcraft. I cause the plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Every voice speaking against everyone's destiny. The Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to the cross. I declare and I decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the Father. I cut every power that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual, over every family. I command a reversal now in the name of Jesus. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let me pray for you. Everything that must enter your hand, the open doors, that the blood of Christ release. Help them please. Everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit. God has shown you dreams. That you are a possessor. 
God has shown you dreams, your children, your breakthrough, your lifting, your speed, your job, your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. And I pray for you. The Bible says when you catch a thief, he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing. Can I speak restoration? Let me tell you, there are many of us who have lost things. Some you have lost time. Mashamakata. Lekotot Sabata. Joshua said, Son, go back. Move. Go back. I prophesy to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy as one strength. In the name that is above all names. Everything the devil took away from you, I command a restoration now. I command a restoration now. Whatever you have lost in time, I speak to you. Between today and Friday coming, I pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer. May my God, the God of Jeshurun, arise and surprise you. Arise and surprise you. We call him Ebenezer, the helper of Israel. I declare, oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you know why? Because when that pressure comes upon the righteous, the pressure will make them dip their hands in iniquity. I will share with you a mystery. It was the delay of the coming of the bridegroom that made the oil of five of the virgins to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten would be alive. They all started alive, but when there was delay, five started going down. This was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood that if we find ourselves living as kings alone there is a dimension of god and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed and if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone as important as that is we will still rob god from finding expression within a territory 
very important teaching tonight the first thing i want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial it's an information that i do not want us to be take lightly and to be careless over kingdom advancement although the mandate is global god's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of god because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of god's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other god's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across a territory so god's rating for a believer for a man of god for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if god has planted koinonia in zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for god's rating primarily he is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit how we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory so that's the first point i want you to understand tonight that this king priest dimension the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of God's expectation as a portion to a territory it was Jesus that taught us in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what Jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what Jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of God is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now I told you that when God speaks to us we must learn the character of God's communication I've taught it here again and again in Koinonia that number one when God speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two God's communications are prophetic the relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it the individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel God always speaks to nations in men are we learning now so every time God speaks to you sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you and if we do not understand the speakings of God we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us thinking because you had it God can speak to me for instance and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth and I can walk in the deception believing 
that it simply means that i will pioneer the move of god in every nation no when god was speaking he was speaking to you in me are we together now it is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass now if you do not understand this dimension of god's speakings you will end up in error his rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in pagamos the church in smyrna the church in philadelphia not the church in the world when the spirit of god began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches he would come to this church and commend them i have weighed you i have seen what you have done across that territory a and b and c is what you have done in alignment to my purposes d and e you are in defiance to my precepts here's my advice correct yourself otherwise because of your disalignment you and that territory will suffer certain things his system of marking was territorial it was never generic he did not generalize his probing he went to the churches one by one the church in pagamos the church in philadelphia the church in smyrna the church in um you know ephesus and so on and so forth kingdom advance is territorial it is true that we are the light of the world it is true that we are a city that is set on a hill but then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that god places men in territories when god wants to promote men he promotes men by supplying three things number one a greater dimension of illumination i'm, I'm touching on many things now the first way god promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after christ resurrected the bible says that something happened on the day of pentecost now peter was preaching and when peter began to preach in chapter 2 of acts the bible says that the men were caught to the hearts listen carefully and then they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise this is the part i'm going to he said for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would just said this promise is for everyone 
after all Joel already told us he said I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the Lord will call God's dealings is territorial that means a true believers assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful write this down our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence the power the system the glory of God in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jaws, in Kogi State. And those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers. Not just those who advance and win souls, but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God. This, in my opinion, is one of the biggest mistakes of the western church they 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 lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of God within that dispensation to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost they cannot host certain dimensions of him the church in Nigeria it's a wonderful place you know that I love the church I love the body of Christ but I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individual
us who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, is, is more it's more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories. We must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ and everybody believes he is right, but our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter um, 15 now. And verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of God for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do you say well I don't know what to do with this person what is step B after giving your life to Christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirit to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of Christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are 
squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what i'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next sets of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know God many believers do not know the Holy Spirit many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of God many believers go to church I agree many believers take communion I agree many believers join in general church prayer I agree but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation I'm not talking of men of God I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the, the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noisemakers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill I think it's Philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining or arguing I'm sure I'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um, okay forgot it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preserve us of the ordinances of God in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, 
John began to explain to us what he saw and among many other things John said he had a voice and when he turned to see that voice he saw seven lampstands listen carefully and then John said in the midst of the lampstand there was one like the son of man and he began to describe various attributes of him and then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation he says that those lampstands represent the church the ecclesia God's body the lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them that light that is also a city set on a hill that should never never be confused he says it is the church brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth Christianity is not in danger listen carefully church is not in danger but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger are you hearing what I'm saying the ordinances the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger we scarcely understand the secrets of God the pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace a man of power and relevance I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit a volcano in the spirit she goes kind of like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is success still seeing this fire inside outside I'm seeing it it's like a volcano when when you see God doing these kinds of things this is not show it's not show he's bringing witness he's bringing witness to the spirit of man because the word of God must have an agency for performance he's, he's working on people I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding then the fire is dropping on people this is what I see in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabrayade balakota variada kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That 
you must you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of God's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find the expression there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected that's the realm where doubt dies that's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away you, you are not trying to show your anointed your presence always introduces a reality you are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms and for as long as you are there you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them this is not just talk 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 all this empty talk we keep mocking ourselves the bible says for i did not come to you with the excellency of speech it is not just about oratory no this is not grammar this is the reality the bible paul calls it the mystery of godliness that god can be embodied domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produce an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves God does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out everybody is a general overseer everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach i say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir 
the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that The average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt, the personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual. It is not a personal appetite. It's not a search. If, if that guilt were taken away from us, we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat. That's why we love using any other thing, job or whatever. It's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free. So we can't say we are not serious. So when there is a legitimate crown, then we excuse it. How the precepts of God are preserved in a territory. Our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory, like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer, write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer. Warfare and intercession, write it down. A lost act in the body of Christ. Genuine warfare and intercession. Let me tell you something. If we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession, that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another. I promise you. I promise you. Our, our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now this was God angry with a territory. That's why what I wanted us to read. But because of time, we'll just look at 30. God was angry with a territory. And was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. For what? For the land, not for the church. I'm talking about taking over territories, preserving the precepts of God over a territory. A man that will stand for the land. So there are men that can stand for the land, not just their churches. That because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. 
that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings they were human beings many but I found none that man built in capacity and understanding the ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint not just need driven prayers alone but we must graduate from realms of just praying give me tea give me bread to taking over lands that because of your presence in the territory you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God your generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them are you hearing what I'm saying Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen 
the concept of prayer chains the concept of prayer groups the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end are you hearing what i'm telling you yes now the the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people what is the name of this ministry of four of us i don't know who taught us that prayer groups prayer cells prayer chains there should be some structure of leadership but you know we have this mentality and and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of god the moment people start praying everybody is obsessed about who is the leader who has the protocol to follow him if if we do like that then the devil is going to destroy us in every city and territory in zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works i'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why i thank god for all the groups scattered around and notice that's what satan hates the moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preservers of the ordinances of god gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of god are we together that before a man of god starts ministry he has sewn his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is is intact what is it we, we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry starts as a it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of god that are being used mightily by god today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when god called them they went back and cried and said god can you use somebody else god will say you are the person you can choose to say no but i'm not using any other person you are the one i will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in a territory let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress i insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit 
until the purposes of God are portioned for that territory. So it doesn't matter where you are, the assignment is the same. If you leave Zaria for a three week break and you are in Kogi for that three week, every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return. It doesn't matter. Someone else too is returning there. So there's fire everywhere. Say everywhere. But now you find out that some places are as cold as ice, whereas some other places are on fire. Do you know, whenever you travel for a ministry, to a, to a ministry, the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar. The purpose is to carry like a coal. You go and fetch some of it. Are we together? That's why when I see people come from other places, I like laying my hands on them. It's not just for showmanship. So you carry something. The goal is to take it back to your territory. The same way we do in the physical. When they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them, what do they do? They pick one man. Is that true? Or a few people. Send them abroad for the training. When they return back, they teach the people. Not shine with it. Not shine with it. This is where we are missing it. Train the people. One of the biggest killers in ministry is tied to and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of God in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Adam? Me too, I'm from Adam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying. All this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister, every brother, you are in love. No, sir. This is not how we train people. We train people to look for God first. Press into God. Have a testament, a, a track record. Then you can love. But now everybody is, is just, you, you come in two days, you are praying. People are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for, for who it is to marry. I'm not saying God cannot use those platforms. In fact, God should use them. Are we together? However, your heart, if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband, you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first. Most people who become mightily used by God never go there to marry. They go there to seek God. They pray with all their heart and serve. And one day while they are praying, God will tell them, you see this, this, this lady. It's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, won't I marry? And God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and, and usually it's God's best we want to take. Oh, come on, please. 
Are we blessed? Let me be honest with you, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately. Or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking. What did this one, this prayer group, ah, I like this suit that this one is wearing. I know. Father, your kingdom come in this territory. There is darkness. Lord, we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months. That means there is a spirit passing through that territory, unhindered. And all of a sudden, one faithful day, that spirit will hear a sound from the earth. Shakatakatakata. Lekotakatabriakata. As it's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there. Let me tell you how you drive spirits. You make the heavens unconducive. Don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never. And Jimmy is here asking. Those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started. When you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we are a lot more organized now, it is very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they want to humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you. For reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not because You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence. You know, it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. And then one day, let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory. A spectacular move of God will happen. One day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer. The Holy Spirit has been eyeing him. And on that day. We 
we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater famine can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory pray pray in one minute cast away lukewarmness some of us our lives are under attack we are seeing it but we do not care the grace for prayer zero every and anybody is distracting your prayer life I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and god is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and god is saying i i am watching listen all this all this running around am i a prophet or am i apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with god knowing who he is even if god tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what i'm saying all this i am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade but then it's eventually as he's building you you know that no this training is not an evangelist training <laughs> why is this unusual <laughs> there are people who think they are calling their some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say no sir i'm not a prophet me i i know i'm a pastor because i'm a good teacher you will find out that teaching is not even part of it just keep praying the refiner's fire comes through that prayer when your heart is being purged are we together now flesh is being taken away one day you will begin to pray and all of a sudden you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw in part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are 
if you are a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the argument the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves pray in one minute Lord a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession praying over a land please pray please pray please pray restore me back oh God to the ordinances of the fathers restore me back restore me back restore me back Restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata gata. Leketo satos kabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, O oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Hallelujah. 
Listen. Listen. If you stay on your own, turn your room to a prayer altar. If you are married, turn your house to a prayer altar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take it seriously. If you paid for the room, then everybody coming there must pray. If they can't pray, they should leave the room. Don't, don't tolerate nonsense from people to bring any antichrist atmosphere and come and destroy what God is. Your own destiny is at stake. I will not let another person infiltrate my environment. No, sir. If you are paying the bills, you make the rules. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many pastors that need to repent because many pastors stop praying sins. Ministry is ongoing. I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement. It's no guarantee that you pray yourself. You can pray whenever you are with the people. It's no guarantee. Many prayer, many men of God that lead prayer groups, I tell you, their own prayer lives is dying. I tell you this as a man of God. Because it is hard work for a man of God to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry. There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion. Look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. prayer preserve prayer in every territory preserve it in your house preserve it in your life preserve it everywhere don't let it go no matter who laughs at you no matter how western those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes restore prayer back to your churches whether you are in America whether you are in London it doesn't matter where restore prayer back prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two how are the ordinances of god advanced and preserved a regular convergence of believers within, within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. There is no territory that can preserve our spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers. Be it a regular church service, be it a midweek service, be it different interdenominational programs, it doesn't matter. There has to be a regular convergence. There must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered 
then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what God is doing now don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what what happens here every week is the will of God a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people cheers the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too ah, 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 ah. steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places God is doing mighty things this place is one of them 
the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by god to find salvation there must be regular convergence when satan wants to frustrate the purposes of god in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank god for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what god is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of god preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how god is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring god glory the glory god receives is in the announcing of what he has done i know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of god our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of god here you must trust god for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching god in action you saw it before during and after when jesus finished declaring his his um call in luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of god is upon me mr man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but i assure you god will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in god because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day god anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say god reveal to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them god has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say i saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious 
Do you know why? Bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God. Something that defies principalities and signs and wonders. Most of this open display is largely done in the south. That's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there. The, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings, the miracles that happen, you will see people sitting on the street selling akara, selling pap, and watching people rise up from wheelchairs. Now, let me tell you, it does not matter how hardened you are. If you see a real miracle, you must go back and think about it. You can choose to argue, but the truth still remains the truth. What has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting? Those who have laughed at you and said, Koinonia, every time you must trust God for an open display. Everybody say an open display. That one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden, someone that is to go for surgery, maybe your loved ones, just because you stepped in there, while they are busy criticizing a man of God on TV, you look and say, Daddy, the Lord just said I should tell you that this cancer is gone. And he loves their young boys. I was with you. I was, I remember serving God in boys brigade when I was growing up. While they are talking all that drama, there is instant miracle. And he touches his stomach. He will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say, no, no. What is happening? And within a short time, the Lord is glorified. Let me tell you what they will start calling you. Uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is God saying anything that's a sign that God is working God is working something powerful in this time God is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop Acts chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words. Our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick. Handkerchiefs and aprons. Today we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says. What did you say is wrong with you sir? Darkness is all over our house. Say, so bring this handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power. Period. Obed Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back. One month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you. With me. I should go back for a retreat. And say Lord these hands. Otherwise a day will come. The hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head. You believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone 
or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change this is not about showmanship when your hands are empty you are not in ministry let me tell you you are just you are just a no Abba. believe what i'm saying keep these hands preserve it preserve your grace preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand he said god brought mighty miracles give it to us again please by the hands of paul what is happening through your hands nothing 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 you don't have to be in church what is happening through your hands what happens to my destiny if i shake you you claim that god lives in you brothers and sisters what has happened to your hands nothing oh let me agree with you and we hold people while we are praying their eyes are opening we are the only ones who close our eyes because they don't believe in us they know that that prayer is just nonsense in jesus name amen they say thank you sir and they go back and say sorry can i see this man of god because that's the real person they know who solve their problems i want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute and say lord put something upon this hand put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes it's not a carnal prayer i want you to sincerely pray Shake it like a source of a cafe. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone, and with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know, the name of the Lord saying, We adjure you. They thought it's just by by big man is him or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiver a Jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess this is not confession this is a question you, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God you think everybody is faking it he called those who are real known by the realm of the spirit not by members Jesus I know Paul I know who are you hi who are you when a demon spirit asks you who are you is that a nice thing from the realm of the spirit they are watching you every day you have one suit you went for a program they kept water in front of your table they did a, a good publicity and they said now it's time for the man of god a man of strange anointing and you hold the mic and you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you and all of the sudden the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army make progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the constant
consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ listen to me let me give you a very true secret the power of God is unlimited but its operation in the body of believers depend on many factors which includes their level of spiritual growth you must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually there are many arrogant people they will do anything you are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free you just get up by yourself carry a bottle of oil and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ and you go there as soon as you get there you start pouring oil around the compound nobody talks to you you just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly media don't take it away just leave it there so that we'll hurry up please help us and this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the lord was magnified they saw the apostles healing the sick and i'm sure that they said what is there what is there miracles anybody can heal the sons of skiva went to try it when the demons beat them it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere and the bible says that the people glorified god and then verse 18 says and many that believed did what as a result they came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 we are reading to 20. many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because i saw her cat walking i thought it was all about the before when I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver, 20 popular scripture. So mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural we need to cry for the anointing we need a restoration of authentic spiritual
spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives man of god don't preach without power it's not about saying there's somebody here the power of god will throw you that's not what we are talking about that that's not power we are talking of results results undeniable results like some of you are seated here now you are coming for the first time you will not need to tell people you came for koinonia you will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted you open your bible a true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter is until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely let me give us one more there are six but i'll just stop at number four so that we pray number one is prayer number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory number three an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls number four intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers the fourth way the ordinances of god are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget god not just forget his ordinances but forget god i'm watching that and i'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of christ and even the church in zaria who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman served god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this ah, they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say ah, are they too young to understand ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too a superstar lifestyle is not god's plan god's plan is not superstar apostle joshua selman God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts, and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. 
may God forbid that in Zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny may God forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know God listen 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 our children must love God and they must love God genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate god i want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that god is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuit and sweet let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying i don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you don't smile at the child and rub the head carry the hand and spank it and say no you don't do like this you greet people are we together most of us watch children do all kinds of things a visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching is that good bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction not discussion you don't have to be hostile on children a little spank with two fingers one two and then tell them what they did that was wrong don't just leave them cry this is what you did mommy does not like it daddy does not like it for that reason one two jesus too does not like it In include jesus let them learn and know that it's not just you alone preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My 
generation shall bring your name. I sold myself to God and I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive, my generation must know God. It's a covenant I've entered with myself. There's no going back. There's no discussion. There's no hope of going back. To go back is to die in life and in death. It's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life. It is to serve Him forever and to introduce Him to a generation. God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. is insulting you. You beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years, no. See, am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray. They say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down. You must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers, including Christian schools, I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that and busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense and tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountain Top University, but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month. Or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid. Only to come and testify. 
have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere what is it still doing there when you come from that family apostle can you come and visit us try first try first don't get used to all this I, I love I love his testimony right pastor Lawrence I love his testimony it's not all about oh apostle prayed for me and i got a miracle no i came here apostle taught me i carried that understanding back home and i said daddy i know that for 35 years no door has opened in this family but i came all the way from zaria with an anointing i'm using the opportunity of this strike can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what god does and in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people. Proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you, you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank god for what god is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what god was doing to them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like papa people like billy graham still alive these men serve god to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i leave my life Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The jeep and the duplex, only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree, you have failed. Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in Mary clay, turning sinners into saints. 
and I will always sing your praise. Here on earth and ever after, for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done. You're my life when life is gone. Listen, we are not going to be here forever. No matter how you don't want to believe me. Nobody. There is no man on earth who is 200 years old. 200 years ago, none of us on earth today was on earth. Don't live your life foolishly. We owe our generation and our children a debt. I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Let your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it.
Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land Second part, he says, the power of darkness release our land. We'll never prevail. We'll never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand in the gap on behalf of the land. We stand in the gap on behalf of the land. Down on our knees, we take a stand and bring the seed of our land. We'll pray for the need of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. The powers that keep men poor, the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land, the powers that stop development, the powers that stop advancement the powers that destroy men of God the powers that destroy churches the powers that destroy families we come against you by the blood we come against you by the blood as the church of the Lord Jesus we come against you we come against you Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ grows. Saria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Nigeria? We are. Listen. As God looks at the map. He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself. In the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities. Some villagers. And God will see an uneducated woman intercessor. And check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the walls. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. In the north, peace everywhere. We 
fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we declare and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself we command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed we curse you we curse you we curse you hallelujah listen listen let's pray against the spirit of sentiment are we together whether christian whether muslim the truth is that we must live alone and we must live together are we together whether whether Ipo, whether yoruba whether south south whether northerner the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves we were brought by god let's cause the spirit of darkness
we love the Yoruba man, the Hausa man. We love the South South man. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred by this prophetic act. We declare Nigeria. Listen, God is not just a God of Christians, He's a God of everyone. We are praying for everybody in Zaria around. Let the Muslims prosper. Let Igbo people prosper. Let Yoruba prosper. Don't antagonize anybody. Lift your voice and say, Father, because of our presence, Nigeria must prosper. Lift your voice and pray. Take away any tribal sentiment. All we want is to see Jesus glorified in our nation. Jesus glorified in every home. Jesus glorified in every geopolitical zone. All I want is for you. We are not only kings, we are priests. And part of our priesthood is preserving the ordinances of God apportioned to our territories. Lord, I join my faith together with all the nations following us and all the territories in this nation. We declare that God and his purposes will not be lost in any territory. In the name of Jesus regardless of the church the ministry and the individuals may the purposes of christ be preserved lord we pray for zaria our jerusalem we declare that jesus remains lord we declare that christians muslims are all blessed in this nation we decree and declare that everyone here in Zaria is blessed because of the presence of God's people and father we pray for our beloved nation our heroes gave their blood to see where we are today we command every spirit that wants to plant enmity against one person and another we banish them from this nation in the name of Jesus as your priests we lift up our voice from this side of your kingdom and we declare that as far as this territory is concerned, we remain one. I decree and declare by this apostolic grace and under this platform, the church in Zaria remains one. There is no Igbo church, there is no Yoruba church, there is no Hausa church, there is only the church, the Ecclesia, God's own place. In the name of Jesus, there will be no hatred and no violence within this border. Father, we commit our people here representing this nation prophetically. Let there be the spirit of love and unity. Every plan and purpose that is not of God to cause trouble, to kill people, to maim people, to destroy lives and properties, we banish it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We ask for grace that our priesthood will be the reason why every territory we find ourselves will love you and live for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we give you all the praise. 
in the name of Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Our time is gone, but please listen. It's a spiritual responsibility. Never move around because of what is happening around the nation and start antagonizing anybody. Are we together? In Koinonia and everywhere, I have never, never shown any tribal prejudice or any of these things. No. Whether you are Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, South, South, I've gone to all the geopolitical zones in this nation and they love me everywhere. They have received me wholeheartedly. Nobody cared where I came from. Are we together? We must propagate love and peace. Don't join ignorant people carrying all kinds of things. You turn and start hating evil people everywhere. Turn and start hating northerners everywhere. And pastors, let's be careful. The pulpit is not where we used to, to, to build hate. Are we together? No pastor, no man of God. There are many listening to me. No man of God should go and take their pulpit and tear down another locality. That's not what God asks us to do. We are to preach love. We are to preach peace. Not even against Muslims. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are people, most of the people transporting you now after service, they are outside, they are hearing me. Most of them are Muslims. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. We've had a very healthy relationship with them for years. There are many people who help to serve in various things in the ministry. They are not Christians. We love them. We pray for them. But we must treat them with love and honor. The head of the Nigerian Union Road Trans of Transport Worker, when, they, when his wife gave birth, the protocol department went to go and visit him in the hospital. You see them come for our dinner. Christians or Muslims, that's not our business. We invite them for dinner and we love them. This is how the kingdom advances. By the time we start bringing all these prejudices, when people act, it is because of spirits, not religion. It is because of spirits, not culture. We must be smart so that our lives will be advocates of truth. This is why God anoints people. This is ministry for such a time as this. Every man of God here, you have a responsibility to sensitize your people to promote love. Are we together? Don't, those of you who are on Facebook, don't go and join all these dull comments by people who don't know God. Post something and then you say it on behalf of Koinonia. It will be an indictment to both God and us. I stand here on behalf of the ministry to, to present our position to the numerous people. We are people of love. We love God. We love government. We love state. We love everybody. Are we together? Our job and our assignment as given by God is to pray for the peace of this land and to contribute our quota to the building of the body of Christ and not to come in with all kinds of ethno-political and religious sentiments. No. Be a promoter of peace or just be silent and pray. If you have nothing to do online, don't go and begin to instigate violence and then say you are a Christian and attach the names of men of God, destroy their reputation online because of carelessness. We must be sensitive. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye!